Welcome to the official personality guru. The ENTJ personality is all about meeting challenges. The ENTJ has natural born confidence and charisma that allows them to move about the world in a way that leads to a lot of success. The ENTJ wants to make things and they will usually make it happen and figure out enough information to get the result they believe is right. The ENTJ loves being in the mix and being decisive. They usually have large goals and visions that others can't see as clearly as they do. The ENTJ sees where things can go and usually develops a roadmap of steps that need to be completed to get there. They can be flexible but usually they're pretty steadfast on the result. The ENTJ can seem to be a bit commanding and maybe intimidating but they do not see this as a weakness. The ENTJ believes they can get their way and usually they can outlast the opposition to make it happen. The NTJ is also skilled in recognizing the potential in others, which can help them to develop their sensitivity and people skills. They are strong communicators, but they should always be aware of ways to develop more tact and be less critical of others when they don't live up to their very high expectations. Today, let's talk about ENTJ personality and Enneagram Type 9. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to the official personality guru and ring the bell icon to get regular updates on our latest uploads. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up button and share it with your friends. The Enneagram Type 9 is all about achieving inner peace. The Enneagram Type 9 is all about figuring out ways to live in harmony with their environment. This can lead them to very creative and understand others. They can be very empathetic and prefer to compromise instead of imposing demands on others. However, this can be problematic if they sacrifice too much of themselves. Enneagram 9 is at its best when they are being instinctual and knows how to work with itself and its environment. When they become detached from its spiritual and instinctual center, they can become too uptight and lose any momentum they have gained. The 9 is at the top of the Enneagram and therefore shares many of the traits of all the other types. The 9 must learn to assert themselves and their visions if they want to understand themselves better. It is much easier to attach to someone more assertive than them instead of understanding how they can strike out on their own. They would be their strongest if they approached a problem head on, instead of finding a way to tiptoe around it. The nine is great at understanding others and creating harmony. They just need to learn that it is okay for them to apply themselves and go against the grain sometimes, especially if they feel very called to do so. Gentle and agreeable, peacemakers are skilled mediators and counselors in a group of friends or co-workers. They work hard behind the scenes to keep the group harmony steady and flowing. As children, they knew how to get along with each classmate, making them a great addition to any group project. They can easily see the many different sides to an issue and tend not to jump to conclusions quickly, if at all. Complacent and humble, peacemakers are stable and gentle, willing to go to the extra mile to avoid rocking the boat. They are appreciative of the little things others do and the simple pleasures in life. Nines are part of the body-based triad of the Enneagram, along with eight and one. One resists their anger and focuses on self-control, and eights expresses their anger and focuses on controlling others. Nines, however, avoid their anger and focus on maintaining inner peace. While seemingly agreeable, nines resist outer control like an eight, except they do so passively. This can result in passive-aggressive tendencies. Many knights grew up in environments where they were forced into a position of mediating conflict between parents or other family members. Since they were surrounded by bigger emotions, they learned at a young age to devalue their own. Healthy knights are exceptional mediators and persuaders that can help other people understand different perspectives. Less healthy knights, however, can show up as apathetic, overly passive, and highly critical. Nines grow when they learn to connect more deeply with their authentic self, prioritize their desires and express their wants and needs to other people. The NTJ1 has strong personal convictions and guidelines by which they examine their life. They're more idealistic than a typical ENTJ, with ambitions to make the world a better place and improve everything around them. Dissatisfied with any kind of stagnancy, they're often workaholics who feel an incessant need to attend to every responsibility and be the best version of themselves. These ENTJs have an opinion about nearly everything, but the healthier they are, the more consensuous and accepting they can be. 
the defining trait of this one is they deserve to be better, to be the best one can be. Not because they want a team, although everyone likes that to an extent, but because they want to live up to their inner codes of ethics and ideals. How about you as an ENTJ personality, an Enneagram type 9? What are the information about you that you would like to share with us, aside of course from what we have mentioned? Be sure to watch until the end and share your experience for a chance to have your comment pinned. Ones often have a nagging inner critic inside their mind that is harsh with them over any type of failure, and sometimes others' failures as well. They strive to keep the dark, more chaotic side of their personality in check and only give space to the goodness inside them. However, this can be a harsh struggle and one where ones are perpetually reining themselves in and stifling some of their instincts. In childhood, ones often feel that they couldn't depend on the protective figure in the home. There was a sense that they couldn't rely on the structure or dependability of their family unit. Thus, ones learned to police themselves and create a code of ethics that was extremely rigorous. Ones are in the body or anger tried at the Enneagram, which means they tend to have underlying issues with their age, yet they push themselves to control the anger and stifle it. Before we continue, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give us a like and share it with your friends. Subscribe to the official personality guru for more amazing videos. Don't forget to ring the bell icon to stay updated with our content. They see anger as a bad emotion and one that must be collected, controlled at all costs. Thus, their anger tends to slip out in critical remarks, judgments, clenched teeth, balled up fists, and physical tension. Two is one of the rarest anagram types for ENTJs, but it still does show up from time to time. ENTJ twos seem much warmer and more emotional in tune with others than the typical ENTJ. They value diplomacy see the logic in it, and know that everyone working together in harmony is better for their overall objectives than being detached. These ENTJs have to have positive interactions with others and to feel leaded, helpful, and valued. They often help people by providing solutions and giving pragmatic advice. It's not enough to simply have good vibes with someone. They want to troubleshoot and give logical solutions. These ENTJs believe that if they love others enough and help them enough, others will love them in return. Sometimes this can result in manipulation. They give only to receive love in return. The healthier the two are, the more they can develop healthy boundaries and give selflessly without an ulterior motive. These twos show us that the stereotypes about thinkers being cold or uncaring are completely false. The NTJ twos care deeply about others and will show it through insights, logical action plans, and practical support especially during hard times.